realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Hey, what's going on? It's Dr. Andrew Gibson, pastor of the Vernon Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois, and you're on with Elation Radio and Kimmy Kim. Listen, you are tuned in to the right place. If you're looking for good gospel music, great topics uh, ranging from health, to gospel, you are in the right place. Listen, again, this is Dr. Andrew Gibson from Vernon Baptist Church, where our service times are 1045 and 145. Our 1045 service is at 6400 South Champlain, and our 145 service is 6801 South Bell. Listen, again, I'm excited to be on Elation Radio with Kimmy Kim. Stay tuned. Don't turn that down. You're getting ready to hear the best of the best.
What's going on, family? It's Dr. Andrew Gibson, and you're listening to The Word. And here today, we're excited because today we're with the forces, and they're on the line with us, and we're getting ready to have an awesome, amazing, fantastic show today because I have some of my, one of my favorite couples on the line with us. Yeah, I want to give a big shout out to my sister Kimmy Kim. Ooh, Emulation Radio is about to go up on a Thursday. We are excited. We are excited. We are excited. We have Dr. Forrest, Quentin Forrest, out of Chicago, Illinois, with Anointed Word and Praise uh, Ministry. Uh, him and his wife is on the line, and we're excited to have them. Dr. Forrest, are you on the line? Blessings to you, my friend. Yes, sir. We are here definitely in living color right here. Excited to be a part of the show tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your wife is on. Lady Forrest, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Amazing. So listen, today, as we hang out with the Forrest for the next uh, 25 minutes, we're going to be hanging out with the Forrest, and we're excited because uh, I believe that it's so important as we deal with the Word of God, as we deal with the church, that we deal with the family, we deal with marriage, we deal with these things, we have found out that just as many people that are in the world get divorced, that is the same amount or close to it that's going on in the church. And so we want to find out from a successful couple, the forces, how they did it, how they maintained it. We want to deal we're going to we're going to deal with their children. We're going to deal with their longevity. We're going to deal with their issues, how they get over their problems, all these different things. We're going to be dealing with the forces. So, Dr. Forrest, uh, do us a favor and tell us who you are, uh, what church you belong to, what church you pastor. Give us your information. Yes, sir, my friend, Pastor Gibson. Bless you, man. We are, uh, I am the pastor of the Anointed Word and Praise Ministry, where we are located 86. 07 through 11 South on Racine Avenue. That is Chicago, Illinois, the great south side of Chicago, Bronxville area. We are excited. And my pastor's elder Slade Palms of the Greater Mountain of Hope Ministries on the south side of Chicago. Uh, we just excited to be a part of our service times every Sunday at the 130 hour is our service time where we go straight to the mountain. We believe in shouting, dancing, and giving God praise. We still believe in playing the washboard, the tamarind. We believe in just having old yes, Oh, I love it. And I've been there. I've preached there. And I'm telling you, anointed word and praise ministry know how to have some church. I'm telling you. One thing that was interesting that you said, and I want to hit this, and I know this off topic, but I just wanted to deal with it just for a moment. You said you have a pastor. You talked yes, about sir. your pastor, Pastor Slade Palm. Tell us how important it is for a pastor to have a pastor. Yes, sir. It's very important that we as pastors have someone that we can talk to, some them, someone that's praying for us. A lot of times people always run to us and so we need somebody to run to, somebody that we can confide in, somebody that can give us spiritual wisdom, somebody that can uh, talk to us, somebody that we that can relate with what we're going through. So it's always good for a pastor to have a pastor, just like I have children, amen, and I, I'm a father, and then I have my own father that I'd be able to reach out to. So it's always good to have somebody that you can look up to and talk to also. Oh, man, that's amazing, and that's good stuff. I believe in that. I believe that every pastor should definitely have a pastor. So here it is. Let's get right into it. As we're talking with the forces, we're talking with the forces. Here it is. How long have you guys been married, Pastor Forrest? Yes, sir, Pastor Gibson, Dr. Gibson. Uh, Me and the wife have been married 28 years, August 4th of this year. It'll be 28 (laughs) years marriage. We've been together 30 years. We've been together since 1988. 1988, since we've been together. Wow. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. And I want to ask you, I got to ask both of y'all one question real quick. Is a fire still there after 28 years? Oh, Doc, Doc, the fire is still there. We love being with each other. We love standing around each other. People say, do we get tired of sitting in the house with each other? No. I love it. I run home to be with my baby. Be home. Get home and just sit there and look at us. 
I'm hey, if I can say this on the radio, I'm still chasing them around the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Lady Forrest, do you still got the fight? Yes, yes. I love the idea of being here. Coming home, I think about I'm at work. When I'm at work, I'm thinking about when I get home to be with my husband, how we have not just a marriage, but we have a friendship. We can talk to each other and love on each other. Yeah. And I didn't pay her to say that. I didn't pay her to say that. (laughs) You didn't say her to say that. No, he didn't. That's my husband. That's my big daddy as I talk. Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. I like it, man. I love the forces. Listen, here it is. I want to ask the question. I want to ask this question. I want to ask this question to you guys tonight. Here it is. As we are dealing with uh, such a, and I think we need to deal with it as a nine one one situation in our churches. We have so many couples in our churches divorcing, uh, people giving up on their marriages. What would you say? to a couple that's ready to throw in the towel. They feel like they can't make it, feel like they can't. They're tired of one another. What advice would you give that couple? Well, first of all, they've got to make sure that God put them together. That's number one. you got yeah. to make sure because, you know, you can't be unequally yoked. you got to make sure that there's love there. you got to make sure there's unity there. Why? Because if, if, you don't, if you're not in love with your mate, I don't care you're going to fall out anyway. But if you're in love with your mate, I don't care, storms, whatever come, you're going you're gonna to work it out. You might get mad like me. We, me and my wife, we get upset with each other sometimes. I go in another room. I calm down. She calm down. Next thing you know, we back together. We don't, we don't walk off and leave each other. When you love each other, I, I can't sleep without her. So I get over my manners real quick because I need my pillow, you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Lady Forrest, what would you give young women? What advice would you give young women who, who are saying, listen, I, I, I'm just tired. I don't know. We're going through so much. We're arguing all the time. We, we just, we're just going through. What advice would you give that young lady? Um, like Pastor Forrest says, if they love each other, they have to pray. She would have to pray and ask God to help her fix herself first, and then, therefore, to fix her and her husband together. I do believe in prayer is the key to the relationship. God has to be in the relationship. If there's no God in the relationship, it's not going to work out. So God has to be first in the relationship, and and the wife needs to have a relationship with God so she can be able to pray and ask God to fix her and to fix the marriage together. Wow, that's good stuff. Something you just said, Lady Forrest, that stood out to me. Uh, the first thing you said was she needs to ask God to fix her. She needs to work on her. How important exactly. is it that a person learn first before they start judging and, and put all the blame on someone else? How important is it to fix you, to deal with you? How important is that? It's very important because – as being a, a single couple, when you're single, we have our own individual things that we like to do. We don't, um, you have some uh, women who be been independent all their life, who may have children and always took care of business themselves, and now they have a husband, and they have to, you know, try to coexist with each other, and she's used to being the head of the house when she has to submit to her husband and allow him to be the head of the house. So it's very important that we as women or as a woman have to look at ourselves first. What is it that we can contribute to to try to help this marriage thing work? What God needs to, wow. you know, fix with us. Wow, that's good stuff. Pastor Forrest, uh, in a marriage, here it is. In a marriage, we've been hearing uh, this thing, uh, it has to be 50-50. But I'm coming to understand that there must be 100-100. Everybody's putting 100% in at all times. How important it is that everybody is putting in everything they can, that they're, they're taking care of business. They're not leaving anything out. How important is that, Pastor Forrest? It's very important, Dr. Gibson, that uh, we work as equals uh, because when you start saying mines and mines, you have a problem because now you're divided. 
So you have to do everything as equal. Me and my wife, we love to do a lot of stuff. We love traveling. We love to, we love going out. We just love. So in order to enjoy the things of the world uh, that God has blessed, we got jobs. So we put our money together. We go traveling. We go eat together. We go shop together. We just do everything together. Ain't no mine, mine, mine. It's ours. So when you put that ours in there, because when we got married, we became as one. Ain't no more boyfriend and girlfriend. We became as one. So when you come together as one, you got to work together as one. You got to do everything as one. You got to make decisions together. Uh, so that way you, that relationship grows. But when you start doing stuff on your own, saying mine, 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 and this and that, you don't got to divide a house now. And then when your house is divided, uh, you, you have nothing but problems. And then also you want to be an example for your children because when your children is growing up and they watching us, we got to make sure they see unity there and see us working together as 100%, not 50%, not 25%, because we want to be the perfect example for our children. So when they grow up, they'll know how to treat their mate. They'll say, well, my daddy did this. This is what we're supposed to do. You know, we try to be a perfect example. And even in our churches, they should see us working as together, not uh, uh, what the first lady said. No, we as one. It should be no division at all. Because when it's their division, the devil slides in there. Wow. Pastor Forrest, you said something I really want you to hit on this. Really, listen, for a moment, I want you to really deal with this. How important is it? Because you just dealt with something when you said there can't be any division. We have to be on one accord. If I'm saying something, we must be saying it together. How important, as you're raising children, uh, and I want to deal with the children I said, that both parents are on one accord with their discipline, with their guidance, with what schools they want them to go to, how they're going to raise them. How important is it that both parents be speaking the same language? Uh, it's very important because when the child, a child sometimes, y'all be thinking they are, they are not smart, but they're very smart. And they sometimes they know how to play both sides. Mm-hmm. So, But if both parents are on the same page, and if my, we got three boys, we think we thank God for three boys. Uh, they 24, 25, 26, grown and gone. So we thank the Lord for that. But my boys, they know when they when they come to me and ask me some, I got to ask them, did your mother say it's okay? What did your mama say? That way you keep peace in the house. Don't come and try to play side. You know, that way they can see uh, their unity there. So now here again, what I said in the beginning. So they all know how to raise their children how to treat their mate, how they know it's important that everybody work together on one level. So it should be no division because kids, like I say, they can sense when there's division. They can sense where I got mama, I got daddy. So they, they know this. But when you can get there and let them know ain't no division, we work together in here, and mama say no, that's what it is. If daddy say no, that's what it is. And most homes, that's why, Dr. Gibson, that, uh, there's so much division in the home because uh, the parents, they play sides with their children, you know, and that's what causes confusion in the homes and, and in that division in the home because there is no unity there. There is no peace there. So everybody has to play their part in the home. Everybody has to play their part. From the husband down to the children, everybody got to be on one accord because where there is no unity, there is, you're going to fall apart. Wow, 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 wow. That is amazing, man. I think you hit it the nail on the head. Listen, here's the here's thing. You dealt with something. I want to really kind of kind of hone in on this. Here it is, Pastor Forrest, and I want to really, because I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to put you guys on the spot. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm about to put you on the spot, put you and your wife on the spot. Here it is, uh, um, your children, uh, or you have decisions that you're getting ready to make. Whether it be for your children, whether it be for yourselves, who's supposed to have the final say in the house? Talk to us. Well, that's very easy, Doctor Gibson. That's the question you got to ask. Uh, the, the the man, the man, the man is makes the final decision. But the man is responsible for the house. The man is the head of the household. God has put the man in charge of the house. So I can't be the weaker vessel. I got to be the one that stand and make the de- final decision. We talk about it, but the final decision, because the man right then, he has to pray and talk to God. 
and once he talked to God, but but the word say, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I got to make the, the final decision and be the man. But of course, that comes with prayer and stands to make sure that I'm making the right decision. I'm not just speaking on myself. What you think, Doc? Absolutely. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. And I want to bring your wife in on that. What say you, Lady Four? So what I say is, I think of it as me being the intercessor to the husband. So I'm interceding. If I don't agree with something or we can't, if I say, he say, well, no, we should do it this way, we should do that way, or I talk to the child and the child talks to me and I say, well, you know, husband, let's look at it this way. What you think? But he's still going to have the last set, so. I'm just like the lawyer, in other words, just coming to him, the person that's going to him. Like Jesus go to God in the yeah. behalf of God. Yeah. That's what that's where I put it. That's my job to go You're to him. Mediator. Okay. You're the mediator, huh? You're the mediator. <laughs> yes. I that's love what it. I am. I love that's it. The last I love it. I love it, but you but you agree that the that Pastor Ford is making that final decision and you're praying sure. that he that mm-hmm. whatever he makes, whatever decision he makes and I wanna say that to the people that's listening to us. When that decision is made, uh, Lady Ford said something so key, that when that decision is made, because that's a lot of pressure that's put on the man, that's put on the husband, when that decision is made, it's not for the wife to disagree. It's not for the wife to mm-hmm. go behind his back, but it's right, for the wife right. to begin that's to right. pray. She has to pray mm-hmm. that that decision that was made, that decision was made with God at the at the helm, God in control. Let me show you something. The Bible, here it is, the Bible, God, Jesus is ahead of man. Man is ahead of woman. You get it? And so it's important that he is covered through Jesus and that he's listening and he's guided by him and through the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. So we're excited, right. man. You guys are awesome. We're, we're almost done with the show, man. I'm excited. I don't want to let go. We still got about nine <laughs> minutes, man. This is amazing. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. I want to ask some more key questions in here. Uh, you you talked about, Pastor Forrest, uh, how you and your wife love to travel. And I know that. I know that about you guys. You try to make sure, especially as a pastor, and let's get it. And I want to kind of shift this conversation because we dealt with some things that was universal. It don't matter if you're a pastor or or not. Those things and that advice that you gave us will work for any couple. But now I want to kind of shift our attention to those that may be pastors. And so here it is. You talked about how important it is for you and your wife to go on vacation, for you and your wife to get away and just have a good time together. I want you to explain to our audience and listen to me. There are many that are listening, not just in Chicago. They're listening in Missouri. They're listening all over. They're listening to us, and they want to hear this. I mean, I don't know. It's countless amount of people that are listening to you, and I want to know how important it is to take a break and just travel and be with your wife or your husband as a pastor. Talk to us. Yes, sir, uh, Dr. Gibson. Uh, that quality time is very, very important for you and the wife to spend that time, and not, and not just in the house, but like you say, travel together. Sometimes, uh, a lot of times, people be thinking we're going out of Chicago, but we'll just go get a hotel room and just to get away from the house where it could be just me and her. But you need that time. Every relationship needs that time alone. So yeah. sometimes you need, just like when you talk about a revival at the church, you need a rekindle. You need to rekindle I that fire. It. Make sure make sure that fire don't go out. So we've been doing this for years, years. Uh, and when we first got married, we didn't have no money. We we weren't able to go nowhere. But we found a little cheap hotel for me and her just to get away. Now the Lord bless us where we can just go anywhere now. But you know it comes with prayer, fasting. But here again, in a relationship, you need that time to get away where y'all can just rekindle what y'all got, and you want to keep that fire burning. Don't never let that fire go out. Don't never let it go out. Keep that spark going. Keep that fire going. Because when you keep it going, Doc, I'm telling you, you'll be 100 years old and with no teeth in your mouth, still chasing the wife around the house in the wheelchair. <laughs> so you want to keep that, yeah, you want to keep that fire there. You want to. So it's good to get away and have those vacations, have those trips. Wow. Do something with your wife. Do something with your husband. Spend that quality time. They, you know, a lot of times people want to bring their children. It's 
okay sometimes to have a, a family vacation, but here again, that husband and wife need that quality time where they could just love wow. on each other, talk about stuff, catch up on stuff. You know, they need that time where they can just look into each other's eyes and talk about how much I love you, how I appreciate you. You know, so that's that's why it's so important. So, Dr. Gibson, so the same question I want to ask you. Uh, I know you just got married. So, are you getting that same fire? Is that fire still there, even though it's it's going to be a year? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's burning, Doc. That fire <laughs> is burning, man. Yo, son. Yes, sir. Yes, y'all, yes, see sir. How, y'all see how he turned it on me. I'm the host. You saw how Pastor Dr. Forrest from Chicago just turned it on me, and he made the interviewer become the interview. And I'm excited about that because, I listen, October 14th, I have been married for one year, and me and my wife, Woo! we love on yeah! one another. Uh, Dr. Forrest was my best man. He was my best man. Uh, and and his wife is my wife, Nation of Honor. Uh, uh, yeah, and so and so this is I'm telling you uh, what they're saying to you, what these guys are saying to you. This is true. I see it every day. I see it all the time. We we make it our business on Sundays after we have preached and ministered. We get together. We have lunch. We we have dinner. We have a good time and fellowship. I've even been on a couple mm-hmm. trips with them. Uh, and we have a great time. They have. I want to put this on the record and let you guys know this. If you did not know, you have shown us how important it is to just get away and love on one another. Take that time because yeah. we have little guys yeah. that yeah. really didn't that really didn't think or really didn't think it was important to get away. But it's very important just to get away from everything and focus yeah. in on one another. Keep that spice going. Keep that love going. And you guys have been a major example for marriage and with me and my wife. And we appreciate you guys. I want to celebrate you. Uh, I want to celebrate you. I want the world to celebrate you guys. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Listen, we have about we have about uh, three minutes before we get ready to close our show down. But we have, man, we are so excited. We're having a good time with the forces. And this has been an amazing show. I hope it has helped so many people that's thinking about yeah, uh, yeah. marriage, that's already marriage, thinking about throwing in a towel. Listen, grab that towel, wipe your face off, and keep on going. Pastor keep Forrest, on going. I want you to tell, absolutely, Pastor Forrest, Lady Forrest, I want you guys for the next two minutes uh, to uh, sh- tell us, for those that think, I need a whole bunch of money, I need to get this in order to get married, I need this, I need that, we need this, we need that. You guys have an interesting story of how you guys' wedding took place. Tell us about that so we can encourage some that don't have what they think they should have or they need. Well, Dr. Gibson, I believe a lot of these big weddings, they they fail, they fall because it's all in the show. But true love is not in a big show. It's it's because when me and my wife got married, we didn't have no money. We didn't have all we wore was our prom clothes. So we got married when we was 19. So we wore our prom clothes, went to the church, and the preacher was there, and all we had for a reception was a box of Popeye's chicken and a caramel cake, which we never got none of because everybody ate it up before yeah. we got upstairs. But, 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 but we we was excited that we was able to do the wedding. We yeah. was excited. Uh, we was able to do the big wedding ten years later. Yeah. Then we did it again at fifteen years. Then we did the big one on the twenty fifth year. So, and then we're going to have another one on the 30th year. People say, how many times are you going to do it? I'm going to do it many times I want. It's my wife. Amen. So, it's, it's so important. It, it's not about all the, uh, the fancy stuff. When you ain't got no money, all that matters is you got each other. Because when all the people's gone home, when all the food is ate up and all the money spent on them clothes, all is going to lead up to just you two for the marriage. So many marriages have failed, and they spent so much money. But guess what? You can you can just spend ten dollars and have a good win. Cause guess wow. what? That ten dollars will give you a lifetime, and ten thousand dollars might give you one month. So all that matters wow. is just you two. Uh, but on my last statement, I needed you to let them know that I was also the wedding coordinator for your wedding. As far as you were not the wedding coordinator. But we thank God that you were the best man. <laughs> this is my friend, y'all. Ms. Forrest says, listen, you guys, we're getting ready to close the show now. Uh, Lady Forrest, is there anything you want to leave with us as we close up? 
Uh, this has been an amazing show, Talking to the Forces. This is uh, Dr. Andrew Gibson with The Word, and today we've been with the Forces. Lady Forces, give us closing remarks. Closing remarks. Always just keep God first. No matter what you do, no matter what you and your husband is going through, as long as God is in that, that marriage is in that, it, it'll work out. Amen. Amen. Pastor Ford, go ahead. Shut us down, man. Well, we praise God. We thank God for this uh, uh, broadcast tonight. We thank God for you, Dr. Gibson, having me and my wife on Amen. here. It's an honor and a privilege because you could have chose anybody, but you found it is little of us. So we just want to encourage the body of Christ. Yes. Keep your head up. Yes. Keep your, The Bible says lift your eyes to the hill from which cometh your help, for your help cometh from the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to thy own understanding, but not in all thy ways. Acknowledge God, and he will direct your plan. God bless you. Woo! That was it. It's Dr. Andrew Gibson. You've been listening to The Word with the Forces. God bless you. See you next Thursday. Thank you.